I want to share this message with you guys today. I got this message from Krista, mom of a four month old, and I want to read you what she said. My baby will only sleep while being held and I can't get anything done. I can't get any alone time, let alone sleep. I'm desperate, frustrated, and I don't know what to do. Help. First things first, Krista, you are not alone. You are not the first mom to come to me with this concern. You are not the last mom that will come to me with this concern, but I'm here to help and I cannot wait to tell you all the things on how to get your kid to sleep in the crib. Before I even jump into any of my tips on how to teach your baby to sleep in the crib, I want to first preface this with the fact that this video is designed for babies around six months old. So three months old, sure, four months old, okay, five months old, definitely, six months old, 110%. And of course, it can span across all the age groups up until before your kid's a toddler. However, if your child is a toddler and you have a different situation in which maybe you are co-sleeping and you need to get your kid in their own bed, then you will want to watch this video here instead. But if your child is younger than toddler age, then stay here and stay tuned for all the things I'm gonna teach you. The first thing that I'm going to tell you is practice, practice, practice. Your baby is not going to just learn to sleep in their crib overnight. They're not gonna learn the very first night that you put them in the crib that they need to stay in the crib all night especially if you have a baby who has been co-sleeping or sleeping in your arms and you've been doing that since day one and maybe they are six months old and maybe they don't know what it's like to sleep in their crib so it's going to take time so having realistic expectations that this is going to be a process is the number one most important thing your child is not going to learn this big new skill in one day. With that being said, the first thing I want you to do, so step one here, I want you to practice being in your child's bedroom. This might mean that you're in the baby's room playing on the floor, maybe you're doing laundry, maybe you're playing in the crib while your baby's playing in the crib. Parents don't get in the crib, they're not designed to hold the weight of an adult. Let your child play in the bedroom, in the crib, while it's awake time and they are happy and in a playful mood. This will help give them acclimated to that environment and somewhere new to spend a lot of their time because they're going to spend a lot of time sleeping. Step two is to start with overnights first. This is when your baby has the highest amount of sleep pressure and the highest drive to sleep. So they're going to be tired, they're going to be ready to sleep a long stretch, so you want to start after you've had a great day of naps, they're not overtired, and they're ready to sleep. You wanna start with the first half of the night. I understand it can be exhausting, and this is exactly what I did with my kids when I transitioned, when, when I transitioned them from the bassinet in my room to a crib in their own room. I had them start with the half night first. And then I brought them into my room when they woke up around that 2, 3, 4 a.m. hour and I had them do the rest of the night in the bassinet because mama's tired. And then after the first three days, I had them do the full night in the crib as well as the first nap of the day. So we're breaking this up, we're taking it slow and steady. It doesn't have to be a rip the band-aid kind of situation. And of course it can be. If you want to, you know, kind of rip the band-aid and get them sleeping in their crib all the time for all sleep right away, go ahead, that's fine. This video is designed for those more slow to warm up kind of kids who need a little bit more time adjusting to something new. So those first three days we're spending half the night in the crib, the second three days we're spending the the full night in the crib and the first nap. Three days after that, you wanna do the first nap, the second nap, and the entire night in the crib. And then three days after that, you're going to do first nap, second nap, third nap in the crib and overnight. That means all sleep is now in the crib. Like I said, when I was telling you that this video is for ages around six months and up, around that five month age is when your child is dropping that fourth nap and taking three naps a day. This is a great time to get your kid accustomed to sleeping in the crib. So overall, this whole process can take anywhere between one and two weeks. And I say anywhere, like it can be a range, because of the fact that every child is different. 
if you see that this is it's really taxing on your child they're really having a hard time they're crying a lot and you're not comfortable with moving as quickly as every three days take it slower do it every five days make a change every six seven days whatever you need to do to feel good as a parent is what is best for your family whatever your child is responding well to is what is best for your family a lot of times those two things will align where your child is responding well your response well and things are going smoothly that is generally how things will go however there is always the exception of a child who feels like this is moving too fast they're really upset they're crying a lot it's stressing out mom and then you slow down and that's fine too the problem lies where mom is really upset about something maybe they're upset that the baby is sleeping in their own crib in their own space and she can't get to the baby quick enough when he or she wakes in the night and it stresses her out and she doesn't want to make this change but the baby really doesn't sleep well when the baby's sleeping in mom's arms and neither does mom but she doesn't want to make this sacrifice then that is something that it just doesn't even pertain to this video first of all but second of all i mean like it's important to talk about because sometimes what the parents want and what the baby is communicating is not the same and it doesn't align and that's where you're going to run into trouble and this cat will not stop meowing and like getting in the way of this video but <laughs> he just wants to go outside he's not going outside anyways just make sure that you are listening to your baby's cues and kind of taking their lead but at the same time ensuring that they're going to make progress on the long-term goal and understanding that sometimes there's discomfort in these things and you really just have to be persistent to an extent you're still res responding to your baby when they need you you're still responding to their hunger cries and you're still giving them comfort when comfort is needed but you're also giving them the space to do this independently fall asleep in their crib and stay in their crib all night long and of course that goes hand in hand with sleep training so when you're making this transition to the crib you may need to implement some sleep training strategies in which case you can download my free baby sleep guide in the description box down below this is your guide that is going to tell you so many things about how to get your baby sleeping in the crib through the night independently without waking you 25,000 times or I mean even if it's two or three times sometimes that's more than enough this baby sleep guide is going to get you started on your journey to better sleep for your entire family now I just want to jump into my last Last three tips that I have for you when you're making this transition to your baby's nursery and in their own crib in their own space number one you need to make sure that you have a great sleep environment set up for your baby completely blackout dark keep the door shut don't let any light in you need white noise and you also need to make sure there is nothing in the crib except a firm flat fitted mattress and your baby no blankets no pillows no stuffed animals no lovies none of that until your baby is over one year old we'll make sure their sleep environment is optimized and tip number two is that you want to have a sleep sack on your baby so like I said with no blankets you cannot have a blanket on your baby if you feel like your baby is going to be cold put a sleep sack on them and make sure that it is the right size sleep sack so that they are not overwhelmed with all the loose material it has to be their size and the best thing about sleep sacks is that many companies will make the same sleep sack in bigger sizes so as they grow the sleep sack can grow with them the third tip that I have for you and this is majorly going to help your child accept their crib and their own space is to do your bedtime and nap time routines in your child's room you want to make sure that they're getting used to their sleep space while you are in there with them so that when you expect them to sleep independently they are happy and used to that space already make sure that you are doing these routines every single day for every single sleep now of course your bedtime routine and your nap time routine can be a little bit different you want them similar so that your baby understands sleepy cues but also so that they are having this consistency throughout the day and they have the same expectations for sleep all day and all night now don't forget to download my free baby sleep guide the link is in the description box down below subscribe to my channel so you don't miss a video and keep blooming Mwah.